Hi, I should be live right now. Don't know, to be honest. <laughs> this It's like a 50-50 chance I'm live right now. Check it, check it. Okay, I think, I think I'm live. What's up, y'all? So today I am going to be... I'm open to interpretation, y'all. But today I'm going to be uh, reacting to Dr. Robinson from McLean Hospital. Because I got like... I don't know, I feel like I should be putting a little bit more effort into research in my videos, I don't know. So I felt like, okay, I know that there is controversy with the McLean Hospital, right? Um, I don't know how much we should go into that, basically. It's not like, we're, I don't think we should go into it too much. <laughs> but yeah, um, and that person basically... I don't know. The it was the the Dr. Robinson made a seminar in which he called out act like actual people. <laughs> and people are saying like, yeah, that actually goes against the Goldwater standard. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, probably am. Love that for me. But anyways, um and he made a second seminar talking about dissociative identity disorder, CPTSD and other trauma related disorders. And although what they did in, like, as in exposing people was, like, very questionable. Love it, though. Love it. Um, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to pretend like I know better than them, for sure. Um, but anyways. So, a McLean Hospital is the, is the leader in world-class trauma disorders in treatment research. Wait a second, how, like, this is what the, it says on their website, and professional and public education, um, and they have a lot of history behind them, a lot of neuroscience research, and they also treat things like addiction, BPD, OCD, anxiety, depression, trauma, and PTSD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and EDs. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about? Because like, okay, Dr. Matthew A. Ro okay, also like, if I, if this live stream low key gets shut down, y'all, y'all, <laughs> I think that this is fair use. But McLean, if you if you gotta come for me, you gotta come for me. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Hi, not Bob. How are you doing on this fine Saturday? <laughs> I literally just uploaded a video, which is, like, terrible for the algorithm, but I was like, nope, I'm going live right now, I insist. Um, if you look at UK, a lot of NHS hospital and services have dreadful ra ratings on Google. Ratings are deceptive with shit like that. Dis yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, a lot, I don't... <laughs> A lot of a lot of what I what I was told when I interned at an inpatient was that or and an outpatient was that um, people will leave bad reviews because it's not a fun environment. I'm like, well, yeah, obviously it's not going to be a fun environment. I did not have an enjoyable experience in that internship, to say the least. Um, but basically, like. Yeah, that's true, but also, like, definitely at least read the reviews, because a lot of the times, like, they actually have sustenance to them, and it's low-key ableist, though, to be like, well, literally, these actual, allegedly, not actually, um, these, I don't know, like, these people just commented that because, like, they're mentally ill, which is just, no, just because you're mentally ill doesn't mean that you have a inability to, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so Dr. Matthew A. Robinson, PhD, is the co-director of McLean's Outpatient Trauma Clinic and provides individual, group, and couples treatment for trauma and dissociative disorders. He is also an instructor in psychology. In, okay. I, I mean, somebody might care about this. <laughs> Good job, Dr. Robinson, in the Department of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. As a, as a member of the Dissociative Disorders and Trauma Research Program, Dr. Robinson is an investigator on grant-funded, cutting-edge research. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, the, their clinic definitely, from what I've heard, has done a lot for um, trauma-related research. 
His collaborations focus on understanding the biological underpinnings of trauma and dissociative disorders and how bio biological markers might help predict treatment outcomes. Gotcha. Love it. Okay, let's let's get to this. Let's get to this stuff. If we can at some point. Michelle, not having it all open already. Wait, really? I thought I had it open already. Be for real. Okay. I got it. Don't worry, y'all. It's all good. But there is there is definitely overlap over between the two. Let's talk a little bit about DID. We mentioned it at the uh, top of the webinar, dissociative identity disorder. What exactly is that? Yeah, so dissociative identity disorder is, again, it falls in the category category of dissociative disorders in the DSM-5. Why can't I full screen this? <laughs> Why? That's It is that a is childhood onset uh, reaction to severe... Uh, childhood abuse. Wait, wait. Typically, okay. So what I have learned, however, is that what you want to try to do, though, is is if this is copyrighted, pause it every thirty seconds. So, and I don't have a concept of time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, t a stopwatch just in case I lose track of time, as I love to do. Occurring uh, during a developmental, certain developmental phase uh, for children. Uh, usually starting before the age of six. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I would absolutely love to interview someone that would be in like, without sounding as cheesy and ridiculous as possible. Um, an honor. <laughs> Actually, that's disgusting. Why did I say that? Um, that man has a great podcast radio voice. No, it's iconic because he was nervous, though, because like there was a <laughs> there was a petition um, to get his license revoked. I mean, listen, you guys, <laughs> what I, I, I don't know, like maybe that was actually a possibility. But also, like, I it, did he have to change the clinic that he worked at? I don't know. But um the the internet man also i will say though mclean hospital is that like like low key though you, <laughs> you kind of ask for it <laughs> like obviously like you don't deserve to like have to get a petition to get your phd revoked um but also like if you be calling out people i'm not saying you asked for it i'm sorry mclean you're 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 uh, you're valid um and it includes a number of symptoms, uh, including depersonalization, which is the the sense that a person's body is somehow disconnected from. Or... Oh, no, I didn't start my timer. Um, okay, wait. I need to... Um... Um, different from, from what it actually is. A person might describe... Um, sensing that yeah that's the thing not bob is okay first of all um you can either email me it's in my channel description or it's college michelle joy at gmail.com yes my last name no i'm kidding my last name is not joy um and or you know instagram uh it is michelle underscore mana and if it says that message has been sent to review I, it's i still get the notification it's chill uh yeah that they didn't know what they were getting into that's fair like how could you though but also like the parts of themselves are are missing or bigger or smaller than they actually are sometimes people feel like they're watching themselves from an outside perspective um it includes symptoms of derealization, which are uh, things like sensing the world around you is strange or unfamiliar in some way. He must have to explain this so many times, but he's like going over it like it's the first time. It includes amnesia, um, so loss, uh, memory difficulty, or... Yeah, we could... Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> difficulty remembering kind of daily events. Um, more than more than would be accounted for by normal forgetting um and then identity 
confusion and identity alteration. And that's um, the sense of having one or more distinct uh, personalities or self states um, within one one mind and one body. Okay, so um, obviously I'm not a doctor, and I'm not. He- oh wow, guys, love it. <laughs> I'm not here to like correct anything he's saying, but also I will say that what he's saying seems to be extremely lined up with what I've learned. Body. We used to hear the term sometimes multiple personality disorder. So true. Uh, is that the same thing as DID? And, and if so, why? Yeah, y'all, I wanted to do a video about why they changed multiple personality disorder to DID, but I can't find that much research on it because I guess there were like multiple reasons, a lot to do with like stigma, but let's, Dr. Robinson, will you please? Why has there been a change in the terminology? Yeah, multiple personality disorder, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. DID is what was once called multiple personality disorder. So true, girl. The, the change happened uh, with the advent of the fourth revision of the DSM-5 in the early 90s. Um, and the change occurred... Uh, oh my god, now I understand why I'm getting copyright stricken. Time goes by really fast. Maybe it's because, like, I don't know. Has anyone had the experience where, like, time moves faster at a certain time of day? Like, for me, it's in the morning... Uh, <laughs> I hope I hope that this is at least relatable to one person <laughs> because like I, it just be, could be because like your heart is beating faster but it is a trippy experience because like songs like play faster oh yeah we're supposed to be talking about educational stuff not like weird random stuff sorry because DID is really not a disorder of having multiple personalities so true um, some of my mentors in college would say it's about really about not having enough of one personality um and it, I really enjoyed when he said this, y'all. I'm gonna be straight. Like, <laughs> I feel like I have to. I have to balance out how smart he is with <laughs> with this ridiculousness. I'm gonna be straight, y'all. Um, but like, that was one of the most outstanding parts um, of this seminar. To to identify it as multiple personality disorder sort of misses. Um, Because it is like part of the theory of structural dissociation, right? And so like in in other disorders that you can also experience um, dissociation or parts, um, I don't know, it's like... it, It feels like you have... you don't know who you are, which can be understandable, but that doesn't... That's probably not everyone's experiences, right? Like, I mean, I don't want to, like, say that, though, because Dr. Robinson and his team have been working with people with CPTSD, DID, dissociative disorders, trauma-related, whatever, uh, for a long time, way longer, in fact... In fact, I should just stop talking is basically what I'm getting at. Also, I love his background and how symmetrical it is. I love that for him. The the crux of what the disorder is, which is a person's, a child's uh, desperate attempt to stay hidden um, and to- Wait, 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 wait. So, okay, you know what, you guys? If this video does get taken down for copyright, it's all good. We had this moment. <laughs> we had this moment. Sort of survive or cope with- um, unthinkable trauma and abuse um so to do that they sort of go retreat inward and uh develop uh their creative man i must have been playing like 45 seconds before (laughs) anyways um i wonder if the constant adrenaline rush during prolonged trauma has anything to do with amnesia yes because the this is ridiculous. I have to bring my ridiculous knowledge into this, you guys. It's It wouldn't be a live stream, a Michelle Mana live stream. Um, so did you guys know that there's... <laughs> I, I should make a short about this. Taylor Swift's concert, y'all. I don't know. It's like the Eras tour. They get... People are, are, are reporting amnesia. Um, and it's actually a type of amnesia that can be from so much adrenaline, so much happiness. So, you know what I mean? That you actually forget. This might not be a thing. So, (laughs) but anyways, um, 
and that let's pretend I didn't say that and go back to what you were saying. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think that, uh, oh, you've heard of that concert phenomenon. Thank God, because I thought I was being ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, like, when you're going through a traumatic situation, um, sometimes, depending on the person, you'll be, you know, in a in an extreme adrenaline fight or flight. In fact, y'all, I got to show you. Mm, it's so good, you guys. Hold on. They develop an uh, internal world that, over time, may become elaborated and, and uh, feel or seem as if... What's he on about? Is he talking about inner worlds? or <laughs> I don't think he is, honestly. If there are distinct personalities or persons in, in one's own mind. But it's not a personality disorder and it's not really about having so multiple personalities. Um, it's about not ever developing enough of one um, because trauma interfered with that normal development. So true. A viewer would like you to further explain what you mean by patients having difficulty with their identity. Ah, how do you in terms of uh, complex PTSD? I don't honestly know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the criteria for complex PTSD. Um, people. Sorry, you guys. I was trying to show y'all this, but it like it's gonna be so ridiculously small for you. Hold on. Wow, that's the way it should be. Um, sorry if this is terrible, but if it is, then just look up autonomic nervous system precise regulation. So, so okay. So basically. Um, hypo freeze or hyper freeze or even sometimes actually yeah it's usually these two are actually like can be traumatic experiences I'm so sorry that these are so small because of oh wait wait what's this what's this this is ridiculous I'm so ridiculous um, but anyway so here we see uh, you know rigid like a deer in the he headlights hyperventilation uh, heart rate significantly high pupils might be dilated uh, not likely to be responsive, uh, extreme hot or cold, evacuate bowels and bladder, terror, maybe dissociation, maybe too dissociated to feel anything. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is a really cool chart. My therapy, you know, mm, I love that DBT. <laughs> Wait, actually, I think McLean be hitting up DBT. Okay, honestly, though, I think a lot of people like CBT better, but like the one that works best for you is honestly iconic. Um, sorry that you have to be so tiny, Dr. Robinson. <laughs> it probably wouldn't matter. Like if it was going to be taken down, it would be taken down. <laughs> that sort of symptom is, is commonly described as um, questioning who who won it wait not bob is that why your name is not bob because that's deep i never even thought about that i thought it was just like a funny name but it's actually like okay i'll stop okay hi pineal peggy thank you so much for hitting me up on tiktok welcome to the dark side it's 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 definitely oh my god he must be so small for y'all because like his the screen is so freaking um not not having a sense of self not having a firm sense of identity um right. feeling maybe confused about who one is uh how one would like to be yeah that's interesting a lot of systems i've heard from like they stay i actually let me know if i i, I should look this up um it's hard to tell who you are a lot of the time. Maybe with other people it's different, as in, like, you'll know exactly, like, which altar has switched in. What am I talking about? I'm talking about it as though, like, you would... Whatever. I love your TikToks, lol. They not cringe at all. Was that sarcasm, Pineal Peggy? <laughs> um, so, so those sorts of, of symptoms are often part of complex PTSD. Let me get us back on DID for a moment here. Um, signs and symptoms that uh, folks should be watching for, either in themselves or a loved one. What can you tell us about those? Well, DID is a is a disorder of hiddenness. So okay, no, yeah, I mean, like fam be working with so many people, and like if we're gonna if we're gonna discredit, let's let's like say that let's discredit McLean, right? you know, what he's saying is wrong. Well, it could be in some, to a lot of people. However, um, hold on. Well, 
DID uh, is a is a disorder of hiddenness. So I don't. In, in many cases, uh, people with DID will go unnoticed, um, and that's that's really most common. What I'm saying is that, like, wouldn't that be kind of dis? Um... Like that, the people who have gone to that clinic, wouldn't that kind of be like dissing them? I don't know. Maybe not though, because we've talked about how like, okay, Dr. Robinson, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, the reason that that might be, or the way that you see it that way is because like, even, I, you know, I don't have a dissociative disorder, right? When I go into therapy, I still, People with DID will go unnoticed. Like, I get nervous, you know what I mean? Like, even when I'm going out in public, and especially if you be an inpatient or outpatient and you have a trauma disorder, you know what I mean? Like, that's going to be a situation um, for sure. Like, that's going to be, you might be, if we could refer to our autonomic nervous system precise chart, um, you might be in the fight or flight, in the uh, hyper freeze, or the, probably not hypo freeze. Could be, though, you know what I mean, for a lot of people. Actually, no, it, it actually, probably, probably, uh, because you're, like, in a, inpatient is, is, it can be terrifying. Um, and so, like, the, the system is built to protect. <laughs> and, um, why did I say it like that? <laughs> and, um, during that time, of course, the person is more likely to have the symptoms he's going over right now. Cases, uh, people with DID will go unnoticed. Um, and that's, that's really most. But also, I'm also thinking to myself, like, he probably. Uh... Common. Uh, he will go unnoticed. Um, and that's, that's really most common. Um, but like, what if he also talked to these people and they were like, is this your norm or are you sometimes more overt with your symptoms? For clinicians, people who are, are sort of assessing, commonly we will see people with multiple diagnoses over time. Um, of note, on average, it takes nine years uh, after a person is first treated for an accurate diagnosis of DIA, DID to occur. Yeah, no, that's uh, overwhelming, though. Although, multiplicity in me fully integrated in, like, X amount of years, that was under that. So it's not like it's... He's saying on average, so maybe for some people it takes way longer, and for some people it takes way less. Could be, Dr. Robinson, could be. Um, so people are often... Um, carrying diagnoses like bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, PTSD. Um, so that's a common, uh, one of the things I would look out for um, in considering DID. A lot of people with DID don't want to talk about trauma or what's going on in their mind. The, they might feel afraid of uh, sharing that. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that one, I, I thought that was interesting. I don't know. What Dr. Robinson appears to be explaining is covert DID. I'm, I would actually, I'd love to know how, how many people he's treated with covert versus overt DID. And if you, if you don't know, I'm, I hope that you do. I don't want to be the one to explain it to you. <laughs> it's like, um, overt is when you have, you see, it's more, it's more obvious to the world around you. So maybe your alters will be more, um, have, have more different, more differency. I should stop talking. Uh, more, be more different. Uh, be more, you know, have different opinion. I don't know. Uh, whereas covert would be kind of what he's describing. Wow. Love that. That was disgusting. They might feel uncertain about what it means for them. Right. So it's, I think it's hard for family members to uh, look out for things. Certainly if a person commonly experiences memory difficulty uh, and there isn't a 
an organic or substance use related reason for that, that might be a sign that they have a dissociative disorder, um, including DID. Love it. Why? Is <laughs> Wait, why is DID the first dissociative disorder he's talking about? Wait, Dr. Robinson, wouldn't you agree, though, that DID is the most rare dissociative disorder? But yes, including DID, because that's the topic. I should stop. Uh... Um, um, same but again, overt signs are typically uh, not not there. People are usually surprised to find out um, that a person has DID. Talk a little bit about treatment for. Wait a second, Doctor Robinson. I gotta. I gotta. Is that true though? Because like a lot of people, I mean, from what from what I've read, from what I've heard, etc. That what he's describing is absolutely 100% accurate for a lot of people. Um, however, even like people I've talked to have been like, well, once I was diagnosed, people were like, oh, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I will say that it is definitely um, a trauma related disorder that is meant to be hidden. Um, but if like anyone has any opposing like articles, that would be beautiful for me because then we could I could educate myself. For DID, yeah. So treatment for DID it tends to be a uh, sort of longer term. Um, it's typically. Oh my god! I'm sorry, you guys. This is first of all. I'm so sorry for having goddamn ads. I forgot how annoying ads are. Oh my. God, I had to cancel my YouTube premium. It's. I'm so sorry. Um, I was diagnosed with everything under the sun until I was finally diagnosed with DID. Yeah, that's the thing is like, is like, okay, if you self-diagnose yourself with DID, how do you know that like you have, um, like the. May, you could be right, though, is the thing. You know what I mean? Like, it depends where you've gotten your information from also. But DID can be confused for so many things. And also, when you're actually getting diagnosed with it, even professionals struggle to diagnose it. Um, wait, who makes your blood boil? This Does Dr. Robinson make your... It's not that they don't want to talk about it. It's that they don't remember it. Shit. <laughs> the troops got it. They got them. In individual therapy um, over the course of years. Um, it is also done in phases uh, where a lot of time is spent on uh, developing shared language. Uh, what is he talking about when he says shared language, though? You know what I mean? Like, like. I'm so a person's kind of language to understand how their mind and uh, their symptoms of DID, but also safety, um, stability. At some point, treatment may include talking about or coming to understand the impact of trauma. Um, but the course is really kind of prolonged compared to treating PTSD or even complex PTSD. You've touched on this a couple of times, the role. Okay. Um, new, new. Um, mine is co wait. Covert DID is the most common form. He's talking about what is most commonly presented. I appreciate that, you know, Peniel Peggy, because like what he's saying is like on par with my understanding what I've read, all of the, all of and such and things. Um, no worries, Jordan Hollister. I appreciate you being here though. That's amazing. Uh, Tony Stark says same minus covert oh my god i forget i i, I don't want to read people's names out loud just in case on an off chance this live does stay up um mine is covert but becomes overt with stress <clears throat> that's thank you so much for explaining that 
<laughs> I'm ridiculous. People are not surprised when you're finally diagnosed with it. They are relieved to at least know what they have and that they're not crazy. Shit. The troops. Yeah, because it's like, it's like at this point, you're, if you're getting diagnosed, chances are you already knew that something was off. So when you're, when you're, I mean, I guess surprised as in like, DID in public eye, like, isn't incredibly well known in the same way as like, BPD, anxiety, depression, whatever. I don't know, I could be wrong. Uh... Just joined what I miss. So we're, we're reacting to Dr. Robinson <laughs> talk about um, stuff and things. Uh, oh yeah, he was talking about how PTSD is usually um, associated with uh, horrors of war, but that's a myth that only veterans can develop the condition. Uh, in reality, PTSD can affect anyone who has witnessed and uh, experienced in traumatic, life-threatening, or life-changing events. Um, misconceptions also surround dissociative identity disorder, once known as multiple personality disorder. Why do you keep saying that it was once known as multiple personality disorder if you don't want more misconceptions, fam? No, I'm kidding. They're, they're the clinic. I don't know what I'm talking about. While misleading media portrayals might suggest that people with DID jump between personas and personality in re- I see you, McLean. I see drama. I can smell that shit from a mile away, girl. What is this? <laughs> McLean, have we lo not learned our lesson? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're fine. Uh, While well, misleading the media portrayals might suggest, like, okay. Uh, in reality, only a small portion of those with the disorder exhibit this behavior. Okay, but they do admit that a small portion. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, so, yeah. Let's continue, shall we? of family members in, in the treatment process and in supporting a loved one with some of these conditions that we're talking about today. Can, can you break that down a little bit more specifically for us prior to treatment, during treatment, post-treatment? Um, what is the proper role, proper level of involvement, generally speaking, for a loved one? Yeah, because obviously it varies quite a lot depending on the family, the, the, the person who's, who's being supportive. I appreciate him saying that, though, that it, like, depends. I think or prior, it's encouraging someone to seek out appropriate help, um, reminding, uh, keeping in mind that reactions to traumatic events are to be expected um, and to not. Um, I can try to like put this in the link of the description of this video. I, I don't know if that would work, um, but I will do my best. I My bad for not prefacing with that. Uh, uh, you know, discourage shame. Um, so really being encouraging of seeking appropriate help is one thing I would say. During treatment, uh, no. you might expect to see a person feel worse for a while. No, okay, okay, first of all, did I go over 30 seconds? Okay, I don't think I did. Um, yeah, but what he's describing I really appreciate is that a person can be expected to be, feel worse for a while, which checks out though, because like you've, you've literally unconsciously developed a coping mechanism and then you're like ripped out of it and forced to like, it just, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I could imagine for sure. Um, or really vacillate between feeling a little better and, and much worse. And so to be patient and really help people to stick to it, we do find that because of the nature of treatment for PTSD, a lot of people drop out or discontinue no. um, before be they're for real, able to- Be for real, y'all, be for real. Actually, no, that's, like, I can't even judge you for that because it, it just sounds like incredible, incredible work, like, in, like insane amounts of emotions and just, it just sounds terrible, like, but amazing though, in the end, like he's describing. Um, in the UK, there's a lot less formal diagnosis, but I'm going to therapy and taking meds as treatment. I don't exactly like the DSM. It needs to be updated overall. Yeah, when is this, when is, like, when is this whole DSM update happening, y'all? Because this DSM is, like, old. 
Uh, the DSM-5. Should I just wait until the DSM-6 comes out? Uh, I'm sorry, but when I went to the Shepherd Pratt Hospital for treatment for trauma slash DID, I was there for almost four months and came back with so much helpful, helpful information and it did not take years. No need to apologize, the troops. I appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah, like I was talking about earlier, like, I'm sure that there's millions, of, well, thousands of examples of this, but also multiplicity in me, right? Mm -hmm. They, they be integrating, um, well, not that integration is like the entire process, obviously, uh, or like functional multiplicity, depending on how you, how y'all feel, how, what your system vibes with, um, I recommend reading Coping with Trauma-Related Dissociation. Thank you. To reach the full benefit. So family members can be really helpful in supporting a person, you know, continuing or staying connected to treatment throughout the process. I'm going to tap back into our, our bag of questions, if you will, that are that, that, that is getting more and more crowded as we go here. <laughs> um, but it's a Thank you so much, Flash Read. Love it. Flash Read recommends reading Coping with Trauma-Related Dissociation. We are using this book in therapy, and it explains so much and how we cope with it, everything. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, some people have a bunch of funky alters. LOL, Dissociative Mara come to, comes to mind. Yeah. Um, the thing is, y'all, is like I'm not saying that it's impossible to have an alter exactly like Mara. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know who Mara is, you don't need to. You don't need to. Trust. Trust. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull one up here. Um, how can someone help a loved one with developmental disabilities who experience childhood trauma? So how can someone... Uh, me. I, I would say... Me when I'm at a job interview and I don't know... <laughs> The, the same same recommendation would be to seek appropriate help um, and assessment. Um, PTSD treatments have been uh, employed with people who have a variety of different cognitive abilities. Um, so not quite sure what specific developmental problem the person is asking. Love it. I, I, I just, I appreciate him. Uh, don't worry. Wait, 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 wait. So way back when I was asking about what he meant by having like something about an internal communication thing. And I was like, does that mean it's the inner world? No, he is talking about the three stages of healing DID. That's amazing. <laughs> Went straight over my head. Straight um, which Melissa Kaufman talks about and also works for McLean. Fantastic. That's beautiful. Each person's journey and treatment is different based on the amount of traumas. True. I mean, like, yeah, every person with DID have different, I don't know. Uh, so, for example, you had four years, okay, you had four years of abuse and uh, your time for treatment may be shorter than someone with eight years of that same abuse. I uh, hope that makes sense. That does make sense. But also, what if, like, what if the person with the four years interprets it differently in a way that they will still have to, I'm like, you know what I mean? How every person is different in, in the way that they have to get the same level of treatment uh, as the eight year. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that would be an interesting question. I'll be right back. I have to turn my AC on. It's hot as balls in here. Thinking about, but um, in oh. general, you're going to want to find someone who treats, uh, understands whatever that developmental problem might be. Um, I would say one of the, the questions or things we get asked often are how necessary is... Oh my God, I thought I just flashed the camera. I had to rewatch it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, wow, Michelle, classic. Um, Mara feels like a mockery. Yeah, I mean, obviously I agree with you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like the thing is, is, though, is that 
a lot of system over systems will have altars that are so charismatic that it might seem fake, but it doesn't. But like with 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 our bestie here, we kind of have an idea because of other evidence, but like not evidence, all the legend and for entertainment purposes only. But yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, wait, healing DID is possible. Um. Yes and no. You know what I mean? Like, from what I've heard, um, you can heal to the extent that you have functional multiplicity or final fusion, which is when all of the alters integrate into one. Um, however, does that mean that you won't still, still deal with symptoms of CPTSD, trauma, uh, stuff like that? Symptoms of trauma. Love it. Uh, no, but, and like, also there's the thing like, so you are healed, right? But then what if another traumatic experience happens to you? Your body could naturally split again, but yeah, that's it. Um, wait, what's up? What was the Bible book? Oh, what's up? What's up? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I was, like reading your, I was like reading all your comments. Well, like I forget I'm on live. Someone who specializes in trauma treatment to really recover from or treat PTSD um, or trauma related symptoms. And I think it's important. I don't want to diminish the fact that trauma experts and clinicians have a skill and ability that that is very important. But in general, most trained therapists and clinicians are going to be able to help a person navigate the most interfering and common. Sorry. Um, okay, wait, 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 the troops. Healing is not possible, but you can become integrated, meaning that all of your par Oh yeah, also y'all don't, don't take anything I say in these live streams like verbatim, you know what I mean? Like I do not have a PhD like Dr. Robinson, like I'm literally just a YouTuber. Um, but you can be, you can become integrated, meaning that all of your parts come together and uh, you all work as one, or you could have fun fun the, the functional multiplicity. Um, functional multiplicity where each altar remains, but everyone works together as one without the drama. Um, integration is more like when all of the parts come together to form one unified self. Thank you for explaining that. That is beautiful. Problems related to a traumatic event um, or, or PTSD. So having a solid therapeutic relationship where there's trust and safety is usually the most important key ingredient to successful therapy. So I wouldn't I encourage community clinicians, people who don't specialize in treatment of PTSD, to not sell themselves short and to, you know. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Obviously, yes, it is very important to have a good relationship with your therapist. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Really understand that the relationship and the therapeutic alliance and the good work that they're they're doing already is often just as if not okay some heal slower based on fears and emotions that come with their trauma that's what i'm saying like like okay wait that's why all trauma model therapy is set for each person on an individual level so in that case then would it matter the level of trauma that was that they had or rather their reaction to it more helpful than a specialized trauma-focused treatment may be. So we often have a lot of clinicians uh, tuning in for these webinars, if you will. Oh, and real? I want to ask you about what they should know in terms of when it's appropriate to refer to somebody else and also what they might do to train themselves in these particular areas as well. Yeah. Well, in our clinic, uh, we provide evidence-based trauma-focused treatment. Love it. Um. And 
in an adjunctive fashion. So we expect that someone's going to have a primary therapist with a, a good relationship and that our role is to really provide a t- time limited, specialized, uh, targeted treatment um, for a set number of symptoms related to PTSD. Oh yeah, because um, these guys like, from what I've seen here is like an inpatient outpatient situation. So yeah, like in these in these scenarios, you would just go there to get knowledge and information and like work through it with the professionals and all and all of such things. So one thing I would say is that uh, for clinicians to continue doing the good work that they're doing and addressing, you know, the symptoms that are presenting and and refer out or reach out when uh, it seems like things aren't improving as expected or um, there are symptoms that they're they're less familiar with. Um, oh, I hate that. Yeah, but like people are talking about like your therapist actually cannot treat you. It's extremely unethical. I don't even know if it's allowed if they don't if they don't specialize in at least like trauma related dissociative disorders. <laughs> especially especially certain PTSD symptoms. So true, girl. There are a number of trainings. Um, I, I often refer people to the National Center for PTSD website. Um, there are plethora of resources for family members, clinicians. Wait, what's this? The who... National PTSD website? <laughs> Hold up. I got to be hitting this up. Who have uh, PTSD. There are self-assessment tools. What? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Robinson, for the self-assessment tools. I mean, I, I thought this part was interesting because what is he talking about when he says self-assessment? I, th- I think that he means self-assessment, not self-diagnosis. There are videos and, and uh, short blurbs on, on various types of treatment. Um, so for both clinicians and, and patients, I think that's a great resource to start with if, if they're ever wondering um, about you know, what they might do next. Well, more specific questions. Is there any research linking childhood trauma with other mental health conditions such as bipolar disorder and depression? No. Wait, yes, with depression, but not with, not with bipolar disorder. I don't know, though, could be wrong. There, I, there are, I would imagine, studies. I'm not as familiar with the connection to bipolar disorder. No, I'm just tra- kidding, y'all. I totally watched this stream before. <laughs> the trauma but <laughs> no but like also there are certain disorders that you are that can be hereditary that you're born with and there's others that um are trauma based and bipolar disorder from what i understand is not trauma based wait let me double but check. i know there are studies that link uh prevalence of depression or that those with childhood trauma are more likely to develop depression or depressive disorders later in life. Okay, wait. So this thing says childhood trauma, traumatic events are risk factors for developing bipolar disorders. Uh, this is a .gov site, so my bad. Um, I couldn't quote or I'd have to go and look for the specific studies, but there is a strong link between childhood, adverse childhood events, childhood trauma, and a number of adult hood uh mental health problems um physical health problems there's actually a number of of negative negative outcomes sorry i got distracted with this um yeah absolutely let me see this oh he's got all the questions here and then we got information Oh, and then you can sign up for the next webinar, except for I think that if you want to watch it live, because this was like a live thing, uh, you have to like be have like a degree in something or be studying for, you know what I mean? Continuing, about the continuing education, if you will. Role of exercise in the recovery of complex PTSD. Well, I think in general, exercise is a, so true. a helpful thing, you know, regardless of, of mental health problem. I don't know of anything specifically looking at exercise for the treatment of complex PTSD. 
Um, but it can it help with? Correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, let me look this up. Can girl can exercise help with help with the vagus nerve? Working out and getting your body moving affects your vagus nerve. Uh, wait, I don't know though. I don't know. Ah. But anyways, yeah, it could. I, don't know. I, I believe go. it would help in the same ways it helps with really any other approach in terms of in improving well-being, physical health. Um, I'm, I'm certain there are benefits to cognition and and things like that that we really would focus on in treatment of PT. Y'all, he sounds like my therapist. He's like, Mon my therapist is always like, Monchelle, you got to be exercising more, like, girl, because... That be because like I I just come to every single therapy session like I'm extremely anxious and she's like girl TSD. One thing that's always very helpful is if we can sort of walk through a hypothetical situation in terms of treatment. If somebody came to you with PTSD challenges and was interested in in starting a treatment protocol with you, can you walk us through a hypothetical situation and what that might look like, the the duration of the treatment, what the outcomes might be, and so forth. Yeah. So typically, uh, if someone's coming to me and, and, and saying that they're, they, you know, are having a... Yeah, I mean, you know how when you, like, exercise, I personally, I can't go to the gym. Like, if you can, beautiful. And if, in fact, I haven't really tried that hard. I, I suck at the gym. I literally just go on the treadmill, which isn't, according to, like, fitness people, that's not even exercising. Uh, like, anyways... Uh, yeah, it's like really good. But like I go on a walk, right? Or a jog outside in the nature. Mm, it really does something for you. Like, you know how your body just feels less anxious or sad, perhaps, depending on how you're feeling? In a hard time and they may have experienced a, a life altering or significant event. Um, the first step is to do a, kind of a thorough assessment. And that typically in, involves a clinical interview. I'll often use the clinician administered PTSD scale or the CAPS um, to assess for symptoms. Um, with yes, he's gonna. He's about to go over the symptoms of um, PTSD. Love it. Some trauma being more abusive can set some sufferers back than others based on the age of the abuse and the amount of abuse. It can even come down to the therapist treatment program. So when he states, so when he states that eight to ten, eight, it takes eight to ten years, he uh, is saying that it's an average on a common based analysis. So this ain't his analysis. This is the analysis, or is it his analysis? Either way. Okay. Um, therapists have charts they keep on, they keep to track patient healing history and the treatment itself. All institutes and clinics do that. Oh, well, thank you. That's amazing. I appreciate that clarification. Oh my God. With that information and, and depending on the person's diagnosis, let's say they are diagnosed with PTSD based on the CAPS. Um, I'll then yes. talk with them about some of the most interfering symptoms they have. And dude, with him using all of these clinical terms, it just it just it really reminds me how little I actually know about psychology. Give them some information about the types of treatment that I'm able to provide um, and make a decision together at that point about what approach. And then typically it's 12 to 16 sessions of individual therapy for what? Um, and wait, so wait, so Dr. I'll stop. I was going to joke and say, Dr. Robinson, you're saying it only takes 12 sessions to cure DID. No, that's not what he's talking about. The approach, whether it's prolonged exposure or cognitive processing therapy, both yes. of those are treatments that I, that I provide. Um, each session is sort of, um, has specific tasks. There's be between session work that a person will do, um, Prolonged exposure, for example, involves talking through a traumatic memory in session, no. um, recording it, and then listening to it between sessions. The oh my God. can you imagine though, like my like as 
for people who don't have DID, like I'm just thinking of, I'm just thinking out loud here. It's like, bro, imagine though having alters based on trauma. And correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. I never I never really got a straight answer on this. Is it true though that like so you know how with BPD, right? Um, you can have like a piece of trauma that is not an alter, although it is still part of the theory of structural dissociation. Uh, and in the same way with DID, you have an actual alter. Is th does that mean though that that alter is yeah basically like their their entire the reason that they're here was to cope with this trauma, and then you have to go in here and listen to them reliving it? That's just, oh my God. Goal being to reduce the amount of distress a person experiences mm -hmm. related to no. thinking about or hearing about mm -hmm. the, the traumatic memory. Mm -hmm. But again, it would be weekly uh, sessions over the course of 12 to 16 weeks, typically. Nice. What kind of expectations can patients have for post-treatment recovery? What does that look like? I mean, tr P so PTSD um, is uh, luckily a disorder that people can recover from. Uh <gasps> oh yeah, PTSD. Go off. Honestly, though, <laughs> I, I didn't even. I never really thought about that. I never thought about if PTSD was something that you could recover fully from. That's amazing. But anyways, so exercise is talked about in the book, Waking the Tiger, and yes, running or fast walking or working on outdoor projects can bring down anxiety in the body uh, to a level to, uh, in the body to a level to focus better on all aspects. It's also grounding to dissociative symptoms. Some therapists throw pillows and stuff uh, some therapists throw pillows or stuffy with patients to ground their focus while talking about a traumatic event. Damn. So it's like the same thing. Love it. Um, successfully, uh, treatment has been found to be very, uh, research has shown it to be very effective. Um, some people after PTSD treatment don't need additional support or therapy. They actually feel like they're able to get back to life um, and meaningful activities. Others will find that there are some lingering problems that they face, mood symptoms, even as the PTSD. Okay. Uh, shit, I wish it only took 12 sessions for me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I think, I think that what he's talking about is like their treatment approach, uh, as in almost like like an inpatient uh, or out, slash outpatient. Um, I'd throw all my money at him if he could make that happen. <laughs> Starting a GoFundMe immediately. Come on, Dr. Robinson, what you doing? Uh, could you post a link to that, please? Because, oh my God, the troops <laughs> I'm supposed to do immediately. This information could be way more helpful for you than me. Uh, here, let's listen. It's better. They might still have, you know, right anxiety or, or depression. So some people may continue in treatment for those specific problems. Um, it really depends, um, I would say. So true. Uh, on how much support a person needs after, after treatment. Question about uh, the link between being a child of an alcoholic and complex PTSD. Is it common oh for children of alcoholics to suffer from complex PTSD is the question. Yeah, I think uh, it's another one of those. It depends. Um, I, I I understand from my own work and, and peers that there is a common thread. Uh, a lot of people who live in households where okay, and if it doesn't work, then it will be the link will be changed to something today. I promise. Alcohol use disorders or problems are prevalent are also witnessing uh, domestic violence uh, situations. That's terrible. No, but I, I really appreciate this subject is like, what is the direct common results of a 
a parent who's abusing substances. You know what I mean? That would be an interesting topic. Uh, DW, I failed my psychology A level. I'm so sorry, not Bob. Honestly, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. Like, honestly, y'all, I barely remember a lot of the things I learned in school, which is very un unfortunate. I really, I really learned better hands-on. It's so helpful to listen to recordings of me talking about trauma. Um, about talking about trauma memories, I've uncovered some important things about myself that way. That is amazing for you. I appreciate that. Like Snapshot Nimbus is saying that it works great for them. And honestly, I'm so proud. Like I know that sounds really cheesy and also corny, but that's amazing. But also like other people's therapists might have different approaches and that's totally fine. I've been questioning whether we should do audio and record our sessions, but I don't know if I sh could listen back. That's what I was saying, not Bob. It's like you have this, like, if you're not, if you feel like you're not ready or if your therapist thinks you're not ready, it could be like, like you're, you're uncovering a piece of trauma that could potentially re-traumatize. Don't quote me to that though. Uh... I record our therapy sessions as well. We find it really helpful working through the trauma of the memories. It, I'm sh I, I can imagine it's amazing and brave and beautiful. Uh, it's fine, I'm doing film at uni now. Not Bob, you're doing film! Oh my God, that's amazing. Y'all know that I love film in the, in the editing aspect as well, but honestly, I should have went to film, no. I it, okay, if I could go back in time, y'all, I would study something that I knew I could for sure get a degree in because with with my degree, it's super awkward. You can't do a whole lot with a BSW. You can do a lot with an MSW, but do I want that? Do, do I want to go through that? Where no. maybe a parent or caregiver yeah. is unresponsive or not able to provide appropriate care. LSL, LCSW. And in those situations, you know, th those may meet criteria for trauma and, and childhood abuse or neglect. And so the, there is a strong link, um, overlap, correlation between the two. I'm just saying, y'all, if you're studying psychology, first of all, that's amazing. But also think about what specific jobs you can get afterwards, because I'm just looking out for you. Just kidding, though. I could just be a terrible example and actually deterring people from pursuing their dreams right now. So, my bad. Don't listen to what I say. Uh, I've heard cranial sarco... Really? S-O-R-I-C-O therapy is a new therapeutic tool to help soothe anxiety and digestion. It helps nerve conditions like fibro and POTS and POTS. Uh, in some DID patients, but some can't do do it due to having uh, sorry, due to having to be touched for the treatment. Oh, sorry, I misread. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a really that that can be a really big problem. It's it's ugh. Con it's contradicting. Recording sessions can be very helpful, but therapists should be a part in whether, uh, in part of the process and decide when the best, uh, when it is best for the patient to hear the audio. It can be very healing and helps the patient understand oneself and alters. I can imagine so, but also it, it just, I feel like it, it goes against your entire, what your body has learned in a good way, right? Because we, like, DID is extremely debilitating for, you know what I mean? Question about prolonged grief disorder, which I believe you mentioned earlier in our yeah. conversation today. Um, is there a book that you would recommend on the subject or perhaps other resources for learning more about it? There, there, there is, I have to, I'd have to look up the title of it. Come on, There's Dr. Robinson. The recent uh, book on prolonged grief disorder and honestly though this was a live stream what we're reacting to right now and you guys have to be honest right now Do this guy he does live streams way better than i do and he knows what's up treatment um and i'm blanking on the author we can get that from you later matt and link it up yes. to our webinar page. oh my god wait he has the first name basis 
Can I call him Matt? He just will. Perfect. But, the, but yes, there are, there are some good resources on prolonged grief disorder. <laughs> um, is personality impacted by PT? They're dogs, you guys. These guys are dogs. PSD, and if so, how? Uh, it's a good question. Yes. Uh, disorder. Or page as well. Perfect. But, the, but yes, there are personality impacted by PTSD and a grief disorder. Um, is personality impacted by PTSD? And if so, how? Oh, okay. Sorry. That was my bad. Uh, oh, man. I've been recording for over 30 seconds. That sucks. Sorry, McLean. Please don't copyright strike me. Um, you'd have to... Not Bob, do you ever just watch my YouTube videos and you're like, wow, that goes against this rule of editing. That <laughs> You'd have to move to L.A. to do film in America or Lo or London for editing. Don't have to ask me twice. I'm on my way. It's a good question. Yes. Uh no, here's my dream job, y'all. Editing for the Weather Channel. Um, I would say especially... In, in the case of childhood trauma, um, personality development, you know, is occurring early in life. And so anytime that a person experiences trauma during that developmental phase, their personality may be impacted or affected in some way. But in general, in adulthood, personality tends to be a pretty stable factor. Well, yeah, but like also you don't know what your personality would have been if you hadn't gone through that trauma. So it's like, well, yeah, it'll be stable, but yeah. I don't know. I'm probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, and I would say that uh, how one copes with trauma or the type of PTSD that they develop may depend on their personality style. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing this, Dr. Robinson. That's what's up. I've been one that, that really just solidified everything for me. Uh, in the UK, we call psychiatrist doctor on a first name, like Dr. Dave or Dr. Alexa. Trippy. Um, why is America so weird? More than the reverse, if that makes sense. That a person's ability to cope with, um, recover from, think about trauma and PTSD is affected by personality, but that a, a traumatic event in adulthood is unlikely to completely shift a person's personality. And as we mentioned- the Also, I'm sorry if it's disturbing when I like my, I have to like get out of the frame for the camera because first of all, I, I drink water and I just, I realized how disturbing it is when I drink water on camera. And also I vape and don't vape kids. Beginning of the webinar, you are involved in some cutting edge research. And I'm curious what you can share about that in terms of what the frontier for all of this is. Yeah, so I'm I'm a, a member of the Dissociative Disorders and Trauma Research yes, Program, girl. and there are a number of neurobiological um, and physiological uh, research studies that are happening. Uh, the sort of cutting edge uh, is really looking at uh, fMRI. Is this his house? Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm intruding on something. No, Dr. Robinson, if you're watching this, I'm, you know I'm just playing. You know I'm just playing. I, I couldn't imagine that he would be. Uh, um, actual brain. <laughs> For some reason, he might have more important things to do. I can't imagine. Scan information on differences between different types of PTSD. Some of the research being done is, has identified sort of a fingerprint, if you will, of DID, uh, DID with dissociation symptoms so true. and uh, dissociative identity disorder. That's one of the studies that's being done in our lab. Um, so, so that's that's some of the cutting edge research that that I'm kind of adjacently. Oh, he's excited about it. That's amazing. Yeah, because I feel like there's just the amount of research being done on DID is is incredibly minimal involved in but i think mclean is responsible for a lot of the research that has been done um we also not like all of it obviously we're doing work on effectiveness of various treatments i mentioned before that um there are some good 
evidence-based approaches developed at the VA for treating PTSD, uh, but some of those have been less effective for treating complex PTSD or P- Hello, how are you doing today? I am glad that you also caught a live. I feel, I feel bad for not scheduling this, but uh, I, I do want, oh. Oh, Michelle, why are you like this? I do want to start scheduling lives so that y'all can hit me up and it would just be amazing for both of us. Um, I'm glad I caught your live. I have a hard time hearing the guy's voice now. Thanks for the opportunity. You can't hear his voice. That's, um, thank you for sharing. Hold on. PTSD with dissociation symptoms. And so we're, we're looking at different approaches to treating those kind of subcategories or different subtypes of PTSD. Can y'all hear him? Wait, wait, wait. If you really want to edit the letter, the weather, learn Avid Media Composer. Y'all hitting me up! Um, by looking at people's responses to, to different treatment approaches. Is, is there a trend line that we can look at in terms of numbers of people who are dealing with some of these issues? And, and if so, what direction is that trend line going? I would imagine it's a little difficult to answer that because of the awareness level. <gasps> not Bob. What editing do you not like from specific YouTubers? I, whenever I see good editing, I never judge it negatively. You know what I mean? I'm just like, that's really good editing. I But I appreciate you for being like, Mr. Beast's, I dislike how Mr. Beast's videos are, but beautiful. I appreciate that. I should elaborate on the recording. We don't listen to it alone. We always listen to it with our therapist present. That's a fantastic idea. That is a beautiful idea. Um, volume is fine. His voice bothers me personally. Which ones? Dr. Robinson? That's okay. I, you know what? Like I always say, y'all, if y'all gotta like excuse yourself for any reason, I completely understand. I feel you. You know what I mean? He is talking about the research center that uses patients' experiences based, based on their history assessments. Thank you for explaining. So... <laughs> So once a week, therapists have live chats to discuss patients and their treatments. Do they really? I th Such as brainwave technology and responses to EMDR, CBT, EFT, and DBT. Yay, you added DBT. I appreciate it. You know, you know it. I'm just kidding, you guys. I, I, I pretend that I love D or, uh, DBT more than I actually do. Uh... All is logged for more studies and learning for the APA. Beautiful. When is the next DSM? When it's too edited and too fast. Yeah, you know, oh, we have to talk now, Bob. <laughs> now versus, say, 10 or 20 years ago as well. But what can you what can you say on that front? Yeah, well, I can, I can speak to sort of the the trend that we're seeing in terms of referrals and oh my god not bob i literally use Movavi, bitch if that tells you anything about my professionalism symptom severity in our various treatment programs also hearing the same pattern uh, uh, from colleagues across the country and around the world in fact that the number of people that are showing up reporting um having symptoms of PTSD or symptoms related to a tra traumatic event are increasing. Um, and, you know, so, so the trend line is sort of going up. It's not, uh, entirely. Um, this will all go into research for the new DSM six. That's crazy. Okay. So you guys know how I just uploaded that video today about how, um, about the ASD TikTok explosion um in that video someone was saying that like okay the dsm-5 was written by a bunch of white guys uh i 100 percent agree that it that there should be equal like di i don't know diversity in writing of these things however i don't know that that would deter the accuracy of it um 
correct me if I'm wrong. It's not really clear if that's because people are more exposed to trauma or if people are just more willing to seek treatment for trauma. Um, it, that I don't don't. Oh my god, I vlog for myself and rewatch them too. It's so helpful to learn about myself. Oh man. That's that's really cool though. Wait, I feel the same way about his voice. Dr. Robinson. <gasps> Exposed. I'm sorry, Dr. Robinson. We appreciate you. Uh div I don't think we have firm data on yet. But the the trend line is that people seeking treatment for because like oh there's so many things i wish i could do with my editing that I, i'll stop talking about editing uh they want to get students to buy their cameras which i may have done <laughs> yeah my sister's fiance went is a video editor and he told me he was like girl your editing system suck like he he was really nice about it but um there's like free editing systems that are better. Trauma, uh, trauma related problems is going up. Let's talk a little bit more about resources as we start to wind down the webinar here. You've mentioned a couple along the way. Are there others you'd like to put out there for people that are looking for more information or perhaps even feeling a little overwhelmed by this topic and not knowing where to start doing further research for themselves or for a loved one? Yeah. Again, I would, I would emphasize the National Center for PTSD, just the, the they have a clearinghouse of information um, very helpful. The International Society for the Study. Um. Of trauma and dissociation or ISSTD um, has a number of good resources for, for people that may have more complex um, trauma presentation. I need to open a goddamn book. It's dissociative disorders or problems. They have a find a clinician or find a provider resource and a number of other um, helpful helpful resources. The other places I would send people are, are SAMHSA, um, the, those are generally the- Honestly though, like go off though that he continues doing these seminars. He's like, you know what? Online resources. I think um, reaching out to uh, and, and seeking assessment from a provider is always a good idea. Okay, I love, okay, I love iMovie, TBH. Mm. It's better than goddamn Movavi. Idea if you really are concerned. I can't use iMovie because I don't have any goddamn iPhones or anything. About it. But in terms of online resources, the, the National Center for PTSD and ISSTD is where I typically send people. And finally, Matt, one of the things we're trying to do with this series of educational webinars. So wait, so not so my my people from across the pond, would you I can call him Dr. Matt and it'd be chill. Ours is provide hope. I'm, I'm from the UK, guys. <laughs> I just have a really good American accent this whole time. I've been lying to you. The people who are dealing with these challenges or perhaps supporting somebody, a loved one who is. Um, what can you put out there in terms of the hope that is afforded through treatment and support for dealing with trauma and trauma related? True, because y'all know how society is when it comes to trauma related disorders like society, a lot of society, not all of it, but most people have like no conception of mental illness. They think that trauma is like this. You're just lazy. You're just different. You're just you know what I mean? Like. Oh, so yeah, I would appreciate this video to be sent out to all, please. Just this portion. Disorders. Please. What do you want people to know? Uh, recovery is is entirely possible. And yes, in fact, um, queen. PTSD is sort of one of the most successfully treated mental health problems that a person might develop. Wait, really? Um, I think it's really wonderful that there's been a great deal of destigmatization of PTSD and trauma reactions. True, because like, okay, nowadays, like on social media, it seems like we kind of switched ends, right? Like at one point it was, um, you know, people with mental illnesses are like, they would be bullied and stuff. And now it's like the opposite. Um, I wish that we could like not 
they have either, but yeah, definitely destigmatization is extremely important. And I don't know. Ugh. I'm so sorry. It's just it just it must be very odd for like for even for me. I, I was born in motherfucking two thousand. Like that like and still when I was in school, like people who had disabilities, they just they would be made fun of. Um I I mean, I'm sure that's actually the case still, um, unless TikTok has taken over. How old do you have to be to make a TikTok? Like 12? Once you hit middle school, it's all downhill from there. Uh, All patients... (laughs) It hits too close to home. All patients are based on on what kind of disorder they have and their symptoms. Then a personal planner is set for each patient after they are settled past their first stage, which is the most important stage to have a patient in a calm and comfortable setting and stage. Then they can move to talking about the trauma stage two, then stage three, which is healing the symptoms and everyday function in everyday normal events, such as fears of past items, smells, sounds, etc. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my God. Ah, oh, video idea. <laughs> um, so... I would encourage people to, you know, seek help when appropriate, follow the guidance of providers and to know that people really do get better. Um, It's one of the reasons that I find uh, our work, my work so meaningful is that you get to see people improve in a relatively short period of time um, and return to meaningful. In a relatively short period of time. The hell? Life activities well i want to thank you so much matt for making some time to doesn't it doesn't it at least take like two months to build a habit anyways whatever so yeah i don't know let me know like any of you guys' thoughts if you disagreed with anything that dr robinson said feel free y'all to like just let just let me know i don't know uh although i did i did enjoy this live stream like obviously enough to share it with you guys Um, but yeah, I hope everyone is having a fantastic Saturday. Make sure to, you know, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on if you're feeling risky, comment below, um, your favorite color. That's right. Uh, thank you so much. It helps with the algorithm. And also thank you so much to each and every one of my members. I appreciate each and every one of you and make sure to check out my live that, or my live, my video that I uploaded today um y'all really came in clutch i wasn't sure how that video would do but yeah i don't know recovery is expensive though um people don't think claiming trauma is issues wait people think that claiming trauma issues is over dramatic absolutely it's insane it's 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 not insane and that is an ableist thing for me to say my bad gen x almost 50 and the stigma was worse back then yeah, like, I hear about people who used to be, like, shoved in, lo- not not mental illness specifically, but, like, bullies. They, like, shove people in lockers and stuff. Like, the most I dealt with was, like, drama. Um, thanks, that was interesting. Uh, yeah, and I will check out this dis- the d- link in the description, and if it doesn't work, it will be working. I'll put a different link in there. It wasn't great in the early 2000s. Not Bob. Come on. That was the best time for me. Come on. Give me something. All I have is the early tooth. What, what is my other options? 2010? Okay. I guess. Anyways, I hope everyone has a fantastic, um, Saturday. Thank you so much for joining me. It literally means the world to me. Have a fantastic day. Peace out.